In this video, I'll demonstrate how I construct a basic newsboy cap. I have linked a video from another YouTube user who constructs a professional baseball cap, if you patterned a baseball cap from my previous video. Check the video description for the video link where I show you how to pattern a six section cap. The supplies we'll need for this project are fabric, I'm using muslin for the demonstration. Lining, look for a soft lining like satin or jacket lining. A shirting weight interfacing, preferably a medium to heavy weight. And for the visor, you'll need heavy weight buckram. You'll just need enough for the pattern. You'll also need the following for a basic sewing setup. We need to notch the pattern we made to help us construct the sample. On the crown, notch the fold line within the seam allowance. On the band, fold in half and notch the top and bottom of the pattern within the seam allowance. On the visor, mark the center along the upper curve. Cut out your fabric as indicated by the pattern. Six of the crown in fabric and lining and two of the band in fabric and interfacing. If your fashion fabric is lightweight, you can cut interfacing for the entirety of the crown. Apply all interfacing to the wrong side of the fashion fabric following manufacturer's instructions. Remember, as I construct this, I am sewing at a funny angle for the camera and I'm using contrast thread so you can see where the stitches go. When you are constructing your cap, use matching thread and take your time to sew. This video is for demonstration purposes only. Please understand I sew much better than this when I am not filming for a video. I suggest you watch the video fully first before beginning your hat. I also suggest sewing a sample to learn the techniques before you begin the final piece. Also note that I am marking everything with permanent markers. This is so you can see the marks. Always use a marking pencil that can be easily removed from the fabric. You can use pencil or marker on the buckram as long as it doesn't show through the fabric. The visor foundation I am demonstrating is for a fashion hat or a hat that is not going to be worn every day. For a sturdier visor, use a visor board, especially on a hat that is going to be washed and worn on a regular basis. Begin by pinning the pattern for the visor to the buckram on the bias and trace around the pattern. Cut out this piece of buckram. Place the cut piece on the buckram, on the bias, and trace around. Mark the center notch. Cut out this piece. These two pieces layered together will form our visor. Layer the two cut pieces together and pin. To join these two layers together, we're going to stitch through both thicknesses in smooth curves. The curves don't have to be perfect, but they need to cross over the entirety of the visor. Just go from one side to the other all the way down, pivoting as you turn. The spacing does not have to be exact, but it should be relatively consistent. Now, zigzag stitch over the edge of the visor. This helps keep everything together for the next step. For the visor fabric, fold a piece of fabric that is bigger than the visor right sides together. Place the buckram visor sandwich in the center and trace. Mark the center of the head size line. 
Sew around the marking on the outer edge. Do not sew the head size line curve. Trim away the excess on the sewn curve line, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Finger press open the seam on the stitched edge. Turn the fabric right side out. Finger press the seam flat. Roll it between your fingers to even out the seam allowance. Insert the buckram sandwich into the visor pocket, matching centers. On the inside, don't try to place the buckram in the center of the seam. Instead, make sure the seam allowance is on one side of the buckram all the way around the curve of the visor. Press the entire visor sandwich together. Now, edge stitch along the outer curve of the visor. From the edge stitching, top stitch following the curve. You can do as many rows of top stitching as you want. Fold the bulk of the excess fabric to one side of the buckram to crease the curve. Machine baste the head size curve right against the buckram edge. You can stitch more rows of top stitching following the head size line about two inches in to help stop the ripples that form on the concave side of the visor. I'm not going to do that for the demo, but feel free to experiment. Mark notches on both headband pieces. I'm labeling the center front for the demonstration. Match the visor and one headband piece notch in the center. Walk the headband along the visor's edge and mark the headband when the visor stops. This is just an approximation and does not need to be exact. Fold the headband in half and transfer the mark. Mark the other headband to match the notches. Machine base the marked edge of one of the headbands within the markings just to the inside of the seam allowance. Clip to the basting between the notches. 
matching center notches and with right sides together, and the seam allowance pointing towards the head size line of the visor, pin the two basted lines together at the center. Walk the seam around to the end of the visor and pin. Remove the pin from the center. What we're going to do is stitch the two basted lines together by walking the headband along the basting as we stitch. Backstitch, remove the pin, then stitch just to the outside of the basting, really just a hair away from the basting. This will help to ensure the basting is not seen to the outside on the finished hat. Once sewn, you can trim the excess visor fabric away from the visor. With right sides together, pin the other headband piece to the center on the other side of the visor. Continue pinning to the end, but just on one side of the center notch. Carefully, sewing just to the outside of the basting, sew the second band onto the visor. Be sure to not catch any pleats or tucks on the other band. If you did catch a small tuck in the other band, simply rip the stitch about a half inch around it and restitch. Once stitched, Clip the visor seam allowance. Finger press the seam allowance up into the headbands. Finger press the headbands up.
On one headband, right sides together match center back seams. Be sure not to twist the headbands when you match the seams. Pin the seam together. Sew the center back seam. Finger press open the seam. Edge stitch or top stitch the two sides of the seam if desired. Repeat these steps for the other band. Pin the two bands together on the seam that is stitched to the visor. Sew around the seam from one end of the visor to the other to complete the seam. Finger press the bands up. As you press, make sure the inside band edge is just slightly pushed to the inside so that the seam doesn't roll to the outside. If you have a free arm machine, this helps, but it can be done flat too. Place the band on the machine and edge stitch on the seamed edge. When you get to the visor, make sure to pull the bands taut away from the visor so you don't catch any tucks on the underside. This completes the construction of the visor band. You can see how it looks on the head without the crown attached. Mark the center notches on two pieces of the crown. I'm labeling these as center front and center back for the demonstration. Repeat this step for the lining. With right sides together, pin a section to the center front. Sew the seam up to the seam allowance of the top. By sewing just up to the seam allowance, you help reduce bulk in the final product. Pin another section to the one you just sewed and sew all the way up to the seam allowance as before. You now have a junction at the top for the tip of the crown. Finger press open the seams. This step is optional, but I'm going to top stitch both sides of the seam. You can also press the seam to one side and top or edge stitch that. You can also omit the top stitching altogether and just press the seam open flat. If you do top stitch, keep the seam flat as you stitch to avoid any tucks. Top or edge stitch all seams as desired. When finished, you'll have half of the crown sewn. Lay out the center back piece to get it in the correct position. Pin a section to it and repeat the steps for the first half of the crown. You now have two crown halves. Pin at the centers, right sides together, and sew along the long seam.
Finger press open the seam and top stitch as before if you opted for that. Your crown is now complete. Repeat the steps for the lining omitting the top stitching. Trim the lining seam allowance to a scant quarter after stitching a section and before finger pressing. With wrong sides together, insert the lining into the crown matching center front and center back. Pin in place. Machine baste the raw edge together within the seam allowance. On just the outer headband, pin the crown to the headband at center front, right sides together. Repeat for center back. Continue pinning the crown to the outer headband along the band edge. With the free arm open, sew the crown to the outer band, being sure to keep the interior band free. Take your time to ensure you don't catch any tucks on the crown. Finger press the seam allowance into the headbands. Make sure the crown seam is smooth across the band. Turn under the inside band seam allowance until it just covers the crown seam stitching. You're going to pin the folded seam allowance in place around the band. Once it's pinned all the way around, hand baste the folded edge to the band. You can experiment with other ways of keeping these edges together, but I find that basting is a good introduction for a first sample, until you get used to the technique. The basting does not have to be perfect, it just needs to hold the fold down to the band. Keep the fold as close to the crown stitching as possible. Baste until you get back to the beginning of the basting, then go a couple of stitches past it. Once basted, you can remove the pins. Following the crown seam edge, top stitch along the seam, being sure to catch the folded seam allowance. At this point you can remove the basting. Now edge stitch or top stitch the band as desired. I have chosen to edge stitch the top seam and top stitch the bottom seam. That completes the construction of the newsboy hat. It can be worn in a few different ways either toss to one side, flat on top, or push to the back of the head. The last detail you can add is a button to the top. Fabric covered is traditional, but you can make this detail a signature of yours. You can also sew on a purchased button if you want. 
You can also try a pom-pom for a seriously 70s look, or any other trim you want. Regardless of the top trim, sew the lining point to the outer fashion fabric point with a few invisible stitches. This helps keep the two layers together when worn. Then you can sew on your button or your trim or your pom-pom. When you're done, just bury the thread in between the fashion fabric and the lining layer. You can see on the real sample that in matching thread, your stitches will be invisible. On this hat, I chose to press open the seam allowance and not top stitch. The stitch that holds the two layers together at the tip is invisible, and the same stitch that holds on the button. I hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to more millinery videos in the future. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments section below.